Hello, this is Curtis Heckerman, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to use the multiple sequence alignment in Clustal W online using sequences that we downloaded from GymBank. And so the previous video I showed you how to find information from GymBank and to download it into the FASTA format. And so here's my notepad. Uh, you could do this in Microsoft Word as well, but basically we're going to uh, copy and paste this information anyway, so it doesn't really matter uh, where you store this information as long as you can have it in the FASTA format. And remember, the FASTA format starts with this greater than symbol, then has a label. There can be no spaces in it. That's why there's the underscores. And then the use, in this case, of proteins. We're using the letters of the alphabet to represent different proteins. There's 20 different uh, amino acids, and so there are... Uh, I, I may have said proteins, but amino acids, and so there's 20 different letters used for amino acids in a protein sequence. So the I, what I did last time is I showed you how to down, download the coyote and the dog sequences. I went ahead and added um, a sequence of a wolf, of a jackal, and a mountain lion. Now the mountain lion is going to serve as our out group in this case, and, and we'll discuss why that's the case when we get to the analysis but this being a cat is considered to be a, a distant relative, but still closely related. Uh, that is, it's related to the dogs that they're both in the order Carnivora, but it's not within the dogs. And we're gonna use that to help uh, separate the dogs out so that we see how they're related to each other. Okay, well, the next thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna uh, highlight it and hit Control C, or you can right click on it and hit Copy and then I'm gonna to go to Clustal W. Now in your lab materials, I've given you this link, genome.jp backslash tools dash bin backslash Clustal W, and you can click on that link to come here. This is an online tool. You can do everything here online. Now there's some limitations, but for our purposes, the limitations are not important. Uh, there are a number of tools that you can download, including Clustal X, which I believe is a downloadable version to uh, work on your desktop. Um, but there are a number of, of, of programs out there like Mega and, and Clustal X and so forth. But we're going to use this one this way. We don't have to download anything to our computers and can be sure that we're getting all the same experience um, in online. All right. There's a lot of options in Clustal W, so there's a lot of things to look at for the class purposes. And for most purposes, these options are set at a default setting that are going to be fine for our purposes. We shouldn't have to mess with any of the default settings. It even defaults to protein data instead of DNA. So the one thing that we would need to really pay attention to is a protein versus DNA. But we're using protein. It's already checked. If I had DNA, I would check there. But we're using protein. And I'm going to simply a, a paste into this box my information. So I can either use the uh, paste option here or I can use control V. But it simply pasted the information that I um, copied from my notepad. Okay, well, simple enough. Before we can do comparisons, we have to align the sequences. And you'll see why that's the case here in just a second, because you'll see how there's parts of the uh, protein that are different lengths. In fact, if I go back to the FASTA format that I was looking at earlier, you'll notice, for instance, that my amino acid sequence ends here, in this case, the same place there, but is shorter in these other ones. This means that they're not the same length. So I need to make sure I'm comparing the same pieces of the amino acids or pieces of the protein to each other um, so that I can make an accurate comparison. Again, I don't need to touch the defaults in this case. If you had really variable um, uh, sequences of protein or DNA, you would want to play around with these various default settings to try to maximize the um, similarities between uh, sequences, but we don't need to do that here. We're just going to click on Execute Multiple Alignment. It's going to do this very quickly and it's going to give us a readout. A couple of things to point out. First of all, it tells us at the very top how many amino acids were counted in each one of the sequences. You'll notice that there's differences. Three of them have 514 amino acids, two of them have 501. Another really important piece is this distance matrix here. What it did was it calculated the similarity between sequences. It compared sequence one to two, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, 2 to 3, 2 to 4, 2 to 5, and so on. It basically compared each sequence 
um, to the next. And you'll see, for instance, the comparison between sequence one and four is 100% similarity. And between two and three is 100% similarity as well. So uh, we've got some really high similarities. But then when it comes to c comparisons to sequence five, they're not quite as high. They're still pretty high. If I look at here at sequence five, two to five is 97, three to five is 97, four to five is 98, but they're not as high as 99 or 100. So that's gonna be useful because that's the information that Clustal W will use, and we'll talk about it in the next video, in constructing a tree. It's gonna use something called neighbor joining, where it will join the nearest or most identical neighbors to each other and recalculate that distance matrix. But for our purposes in this video, we really wanna look at the alignment. If I scroll down, I can see the alignment, and you can see that this is where the extra pieces of information were in three of the sequences, and the other two sequences were missing it. Now, I, how I can tell that the program is not gonna use this information, it uses a little code here at the very bottom row. These asterisks mean that everything is the same in that particular column of letters, right? And so uh, that's telling us that they're aligned really well. And so it's going to ignore this information. Oops, it's going to ignore this first segment because not all of them have that. Now, the interesting pieces, so it's really good to have these big stretches of data that all align because it tells us that we're lining up the right pieces of the protein. The really interesting pieces are when we don't have an asterisk. Because if I look up this column, see how some of them have one letter and others have a different letter. So Canis lupus familiaris and Canis lupus have an I here in this call in this position, whereas the other ones have a V. Right? So probably isoleucine versus valine, and um, we see a number of places like that. So these little these little places that don't have an asterisk are interesting because those are the places where we're going to have some information. For instance, let's take a look at this location. We see that the puma or the the, the mountain lion has a different one in the four dogs all have the same. I see the same character as I move down here. I see even though they're different amino acids, I have the same similarity. All of the dogs have one, the cat has a different one. And so this is what I'm looking for and what the program is going to be looking for in terms of differences. And those differences are going to tell us something about their relationships. Okay, so that's the multiple sequence alignment. It tells us something about but make sure, for first of all, that we're comparing the right pieces of DNA or protein and that they're lined up so that we're making homologous comparisons and we're not comparing uh, 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 parts of DNA or, DNA or protein that don't belong together. Uh, in a different kind of analysis, if I were to, instead of looking at dogs, wouldn't they all going to be very similar? If I had a dog, a cat, a fish, um, a a weasel, all sorts of different kinds of organisms in there, I would see a lot more differences between them. And the, the alignment gets a little bit more difficult. So if I'm looking at a conserved gene with very closely related species, the alignment's gonna be pretty easy, but that's not the case as I start looking at more and more distantly related organisms. Okay, so that's the process of aligning sequences. In the next video, we're going to basically press a button we're going to use it and we're going to make a tree and using this information that the program developed. But we'll talk about that separately as a separate piece of this analysis.